in the game room, on your day off, and even out on the ocean, Brunswick has manufactured fun for over 150 years. But in an uncertain economy, is there enough appetite for luxury to put this leisure company on easy street? Most of the time when a stock goes lower, it gets cheaper. Sometimes those stocks deserve to go down because the underlying enterprise is less valuable than we thought. If you want to be a good investor, you need to be able to tell the difference between those two situations, which brings me to Brunswick Corporation, BC, the world's largest maker of recreational boats, along with boat engines and some exercise equipment. After plateauing in 2015, Brunswick stocks seemed like I had gotten a new lease on life starting late last year. That is until the company reported its most recent quarter near the end of July. Since then, the stock's been slammed. The reason? When you actually look at the quarter, the headline numbers were pretty strong. Brunswick beat the top and bottom line estimates and narrowed their full year guidance, offered some bullish commentary on the boating marketplace in both the United States and the rest of the world. Unfortunately, the company's margin shrunk, and it continues to see some weakness, but only in the largest end, the largest boat purchases. But that was enough to spark a sell-off. So I got to ask, has Brunswick stock been punished enough that it even deserves to be punished in the first place? Let's talk with Mark Swabro. He's the chairman and CEO of Brunswick Corporation. Learn more about the company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Swabro, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. See you again, Tim. All Good right. to be here. All right, but first I got to ask you. It are, is there something about boating that has made it so it's not just a male thing, but women? And I say that because when I told my wife you were coming and I showed her pictures, she goes, all right, you got to ask him, need the table, T-top, rod holders, activity tower with storage racks, poking platform, live well, live well stereo, and the whole colors, I prefer glacier green. We can do it. <laughs> we can do it. In fact, the value of boats keep going up. Consumers keep specking more and more on the to make it an enjoyable experience. I mean, it really is incredible, isn't it? It's, it's a much more, when I was growing up, it was just your grandfather had it. Now it's women have it, kids want it. It's changed dramatically. Who wants a boat? In fact, it's kind of ironic. If you go on NMMA's site, it's, there's a whole uh, aspect devoted to how to convince your spouse this is the right thing to do. Oh, I love it. Now, what I think I want to uh, talk about, and some of it's going to be tough to talk about, but there was a terrible hurricane. Yep. And a after Hurricane Sandy, uh, it's a superstorm, everybody has to have insurance. I know this from right. our boat. We, our, our, we have a 17-foot Boston Whaler. Everybody has to have insurance, so therefore we all got new boats when it yep. happened. Is that same phenomenon happening in Florida? And I know you guys are deeply committed to the area. What have you done with the hurricane? Well, let's let's start with the replacements. Okay. So typically, if you go back and look at, you know, Hurricane Matthew, uh, you look at Sandy, Katrina, and and now the most recent one. Typically, the re the boat aspect is delayed about 12 to 18 months. Okay. The priorities are getting your home, the roof, right. your life right. back to normal, getting uh, the checks from the insurance right. company, all those things. But the other part is some people return to boating through used boats. Uh, right. They're not all new replacements. But I think the first thing we'll see is uh, we've got a huge parts and accessory business, about 25% right. of the company. You'll start seeing some of that as people repair boats. Right. And then over time, you know, we'll pick up the new boat. And I boats. understand you've been uh, very, uh, your, your company's been very charitable when it comes right. to what happened in the hurricane. No, we've, uh, I don't want to say we ever get good at it, but, right. you know, we're, we're pretty good. Uh, pretty good protocols and systems about what to do and where. And particularly with Hurricane Harvey, we devoted, uh, uh, made a lot of boats, engines available for the rescue operation. Rest okay, that's terrific. Now, I wanted to ask you, there was a, a comment and there is a chart in your deck which shows that there were um, unfavorable increases in warranty costs and legal expenses. And then there was another one which showed that the highest end not doing well. Is that what right. knocked the stock down? Because I don't, overall, it was a pretty good quarter. Yeah, I, I think we were hit by a couple things. I mean, Marine Max, uh, when they did their announcement, their mix is a little more to bigger boats. Right. People read things in that into that for us. Okay. Secondly, uh, big boats, I just want to put in perspective, big boats represent less than 4%. Right. 4% of Brunswick's revenue, and even less of that of our operating income. So people focus on a very, very small 
portion of our corporation. Now, you've also diversified very well into exercise equipment, made an acquisition there. How yep. big's that market? Because we've had Planet Fitness on. We did a lot of work with Lifetime, which I know is right. growing like mad now that it's private. Is that, a, is that the best uh, customer, those kinds, or hospitality? Where are the big customers for your equipment? Well, about 90% of our fitness business is in the commercial space. Okay. So about 60% club, 30% is really dealing with what we call verticals. Hospitality, multifamily housing, education, military, all those kinds of Go things. Go to rehab, too. Well, we also get into the rehab, but the, the military is more for deployment and bases oh, okay. and all, all those kinds of things. But, uh, yeah, we've made three acquisitions, one in the uh, company called SciFit, which got us into rehabilitation right. uh, for the baby boomers. And, uh, but secondly, we've bought a company called Indoor Cycling Group, ICG, mm -hmm. to take advantage of some of the trends going on in group exercise. Mm -hmm. And then we also bought uh, Cybex. So we're the number one player. We bought the, th uh, the fifth largest yep. player. I'm, th I'm two and for you, two. I have a Cybex and yes, I have a Boston do. Whale, as you, as you know. Now, uh, one last thing. It, it, you, in your deck, you talk about the popularity of fishing. Some of these uh, sporting goods stores are not selling as much fishing uh, gear as they used to, but the, business, but the business of fishing is a good one, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the number two activity in America. Uh, millions and millions of people fish. And I think that's one of the misconceptions. And when you were talking earlier about big boats, right. a hell of a lot of the volume is really about people who fish, go on the lakes. It's time with buddies. It's time with family, grandchildren. It, it's really a lifestyle. And that's where a lot of the volume, and those are just middle-class Americans. Yep, no, this is something that everybody has in common. Um, and it's, I find it's just the greatest investment when it comes to fun. Absolutely. I know I'm an endorser, what can I do? We spend every weekend on our Boston right. Whaler. Thank you so much. That's Mark Suave, Chairman CEO of Brunswick Corporation, BC. This is a long-term holding. Mad Money's back after the break. Yeah, thank you, thank Mark. You. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.